Uh, it is more than a month since Hamas terrorists brutally attacked innocent Israelis. Since this time, with no end in sight to this horrific conflict, we have seen an alarming rise in anti-Semitism here in Australia and around the globe. This is causing deep, deep fear amongst Jewish Australians, including school students who don't feel safe walking to school or university students who hide in the shadows on campus, who dare not display symbols of their faith. Whether it's hateful signs, appalling chants at protests, families in fear of sending their kids to school, or shocking attacks on businesses, all Australians must stand up to this abhorrent anti-Semitism. This morning, I attended the Bring Them Home rally outside Parliament House in Canberra. On display were the details of 239 men, women and children taken hostage by Hamas, their names and faces, empty prams and empty shoes. I thank the group United with Israel and those Jewish Australians who gathered to share their stories. They included a group of Jewish university students from ANU here in Canberra who spoke about how they feel unsupported and frightened. I raised particular concerns about Jewish students because they are the ones being targeted particularly at universities. One student told me he had been verbally abused and even spat on in recent weeks. He said he felt that university administrators and the student union were not taking proactive measures to protect those of Jewish faith. Another student told me she would rather stay at home than head to classes. Um, this is happening in our country and it is devastating. Every Australian, inclu including those of Jewish faith, has the right to feel safe in their own country. Uh, despite the assurances I have received from the Minister for Education and Universities Australia, not enough is being done to guarantee the safety of Jewish students at Australian universities. Tomorrow at Melbourne University, students and staff are holding a pro-Palestine protest, calling on the university to cut its ties with the US defence company Lockheed Martin and rescind the IHRA definition of um, anti-Semitism which protesters claim is being used punitively to suppress political activism. So what measures are the, is the university delivering to keep student, Jewish students safe tomorrow? Why would any Jewish student risk attending a lecture at Melbourne Uni? Next week, a group called Free Palestine Melbourne is encouraging a Melbourne-wide school walkout. The Albanese government must act to ensure that no school participates in next week's proposed school strike for Palestine. Students must not be used by political pawn, as political pawns by any group. Our kids need to be in school. This protest is not only completely unacceptable, but risks heightening anti-Semitic behaviour across communities. That's why I called on Minister Clare to ensure that no school participates and also ask the Minister to obtain such assurances from State and Territory Education Ministers. I am pleased to say that Minister Clare has made it clear that he opposes this school strike. But I am horrified that the Victorian Premier, Jacinta Allen, has defended this planned school's walkout in support of Palestine. This extreme left-wing Premier, just like her predecessor Daniel Andrews, has defended the so-called democratic rights of students to come together and hold this rally, which is a disgrace. This puts Victorian school children arguably in danger. I believe this Premier has shown a flagrant disregard for the safety and welfare of these children and demonstrates that she is not up to the job. I also condemn the Greens statement, the statement from Senator Ormond Payne, which has called on the Minister to retract the Minister for Education, Jason Clare, 
to retract his comments, and I'm not going to dignify those comments by making any further reference to them. I make the coalition's position crystal clear. We stand resolutely with Israel and its right to defend itself from the ongoing terrorist attacks by Hamas, Hezbollah and its supporters in Iran and elsewhere. The Albanese Labor government needs to live up to the commitments it made in supporting the bipartisan motion on the 16th of October in Australia's parliament, which unequivocally backed Israel's inherent right to defend itself and called for the hostages to be released. The Albanese government needs to explain how it is upholding those commitments when it fails to lay the blame for Palestinian deaths at the feet of Hamas terrorists using civilians and civilian infrastructure as human shields. While the loss of any innocent life is a tragedy, there is no moral equivalence between the deliberate targeting of innocent civilians by Hamas and Israeli actions to disable the terrorist organisation Hamas. I refer to the terrible protests that occurred outside the synagogue in Melbourne last Friday night in Caulfield. These types of scenes are abhorrent uh, in our country, and I raise serious concerns that some in this place have not condemned this protest for what it was, an abhorrent act of anti-Semitism. As I say, the safety of all Australians is paramount. Uh, many Jewish Australians have not ever witnessed or experienced the type of anti-Semitism which is now happening in our country. The Albanese government should not mince its words. It should, not con it should condemn anti-Semitism when it occurs without qualification or drawing any equivalency uh, by suggesting, as occurred with the Caulfield protest, uh, that there should be no Islamophobia when clearly uh, there was no Islamophobia on display outside the synagogue in Caulfield. And I say to Victorian school students, please don't allow yourselves to be used as pawns by those who seek to drag you in to this terrible, terrible protest that's planned for next week. And I say to the Victorian Premier, please retract the comments that you have made to safeguard the security and safety of all school students in Melbourne. Thank you.